Hey folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for joining us on Fat Burning Man, where we talk about real food and real results. More specifically, as you'll learn on this particular show, we also talk about the mental and physical benefits of fueling with fat. So today we're here with L. Russ, author of The Paleo Thyroid Solution and host of the Primal Blueprint podcast. If you want to know how to use food as medicine, improve thyroid function, or become fat adapted, especially as a woman, this show is for you. But before we get there, I just want to give a quick shout out and thanks to those of you who made the trip to see me speak at Penn State. Allison and I had a blast hanging out with all of you. So here's a little recap. Our favorite microbiologist, Tammy, made us coffee kombucha. Have you ever heard of that? It's amazing and you have to try it. You can make it yourself at home pretty easily. Hopefully we'll be able to throw that up on the blog at fatburningman.com pretty soon. But there was also cranberry kombucha, home roasted coffee with raw heavy cream, homemade Snickers bars, and anything else you could possibly ferment. Our microbiomes after this trip are very happy, so thank you for that, Tammy. And if you yourself haven't ventured into the world of food geekery and fermentables, you're totally missing out. Check out past episodes of the Fat Burning Man Show where we talk about the microbiome, fermenting your own food at home. It's a lot of fun. So uh, the next thing that happened, our chef Drew at Theodora's made a four-course meal for us inspired by the wild diet, including bacon-wrapped sea scallops, grass-fed steak, and even cheesecake. So if you're in Pennsylvania, you have to go see Drew. At the book signing, I met a man named Brandon who lost an incredible 90 pounds in around six months with what he learned in the wild diet. So that takes some serious dedication and trust in the process, Brandon. So I just want to give you huge props for making that happen. And by the way, if you're listening to this and you want to see any pictures, make sure to follow me at Fat Burning Man or Abel James on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all those social medias. Allison and I also met another young superhero named Jack who read The Wild Diet the whole way through. Then he used what he learned to drop weight for his wrestling team and went on to kick butt in the state final. So I think we need some Vision Quest music in the background, but I'm so proud of you, Jack. It was awesome to meet you. Keep on going. We'll get you a medal next year. So if you've been listening to this show for a while or if you're brand new, there is plenty that you can get for free at my website, fatburningman.com. All you have to do is enter your email address and I'll send you a quick start guide with an infographic to the wild diet as well as a seven-day meal plan to get you started right away. So all you have to do is go to fatburningman.com from any device, type in your best email address, and I'll send it right to you. All right, onto the show with L. You're about to learn what to do if you're still afraid of eating fat, simple steps to optimize your thyroid health, what it's like to be a fat adapted, fat burning woman, and much more. Let's go hang out with L. All right, folks, L. Russ is a writer, coach, and host of the Primal Blueprint podcast. After battling two bouts of severe hypothyroidism, including an acute reverse T3 problem, she wrote The Paleo Thyroid Solution. In both instances, she healed herself alone, departing from mainstream medical approach to question traditional protocols and engage in personal experimentation to dial in wellness. Elle, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We are such fans of yours of the Primal Blueprint, and I love the Wild Diet audiobook, and I recommend it to everyone. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> Thank you really, so much. Really, it is. I've listened, I'm on like my second listen, and there's very few audiobooks that I feel that way about, but you're such a great narrator. So I just think the audiobook is just even more punches it, you know, than oh, reading man. it. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it hearing that um, I recorded it the same week as I recorded a music album so my voice was completely trashed <laughs> but Maybe it was like so much that fun you just training element <laughs> yeah right. we like true but you, yeah so you just kind of have to keep leaning into it and and having a good time and I think so many people they just read in such a boring way and you can have a lot of fun with it so I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it thank you for that but Love it. I want to talk about you and and uh some yeah. of the things that you've gone through in terms of personal experimentation as it relates to specifically, you know, your thyroid. It's something that a lot of people who are listening have struggled with at some point. My mom is hypo hypothyroid. I've had some problems over the course of the years. And then a lot of other people might not even know that much about the thyroid, but it's so important when we're talking about health, metabolism, and pretty much everything else that I'd love for you to kind of share some of your personal experience. 
Yeah, well, before we get into how badly I suffered for so long because of <laughs> uninformed doctors using 1973, you know, treatment protocols, yeah. uh, I just want to start off and say that everyone has a thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. You will die without the gland itself. So therefore, if you don't have adequate thyroid hormones, mm -hmm. so like when they remove someone's thyroid, you have to give them replacement, okay? The, the other thing people don't realize is that whether you have a thyroid problem or not, your thyroid is the master gland of your entire body. It it, it is responsible for fat burning. It is the only thing that dishes out the very important fat burning hormone called T3. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to just like go online and Google T3 or Cytomel or, uh, you know, lyothyronine sodium, what would come up would be thousands of bodybuilding sites. And right. you might be like, that's weird. But the reason is, is because those bodybuilders jam themselves with T3 for like six weeks, often screwing up their thyroids, but they do it to burn and shed excess fat quickly. Okay. Right. So that's the thyroid hormone they're taking. So if you're living a non-primal life, and that means, or you know, non-wild life, evolutionary, which means all the elements, you know, uh, activity, you know, overtraining or under, you know, not enough, mm -hmm. but usually it's too much. Uh, then there's the blood sugar imbalances that happen with, you know, going primal and being wild. Uh, that absolutely is the ultimate in blood glucose management mm -hmm. and stability. And so that relates now to adrenals. You have this sort of, there's really like a, a triad here we've got, you know, it's, it's like adrenals, mm -hmm. blood, glu you know, blood glucose management, and then you've got like the stress, which can be all kinds. All affects your thyroid. And it's all from a primal perspective. Um, and I'm going to get into the details about that. But what I want to explain to everyone, I mean, maybe I can give it just a quick crack crash course on how this works out yeah, um the pituitary at the base of the brain can sense whether or not you have enough thyroid hormones in your blood mm -hmm. when it senses that they're low it sends a signal to the thyroid to produce more okay now here's where the problems come in hand come, come into play mm -hmm. the brain can send the signal but the thyroid might not respond mm -hmm. or the brain can send the signal and the thyroid doesn't respond with enough or the brain never sends the signal at all. Now, why would or wouldn't it send the signal? And this, this is for anybody trying to achieve fat burning, whether you have a thyroid problem or not. I'll talk about people with thyroid problems in a minute because people even taking medication, thyroid hormone replacement, like myself, yeah. following a paleo primal life is what optimizes that hormone metabolism. It, mm -hmm. it does you no good to pummel yourself with thyroid hormones unless they're actually going to get into the cells, punch into work and do the job. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise they're kind of going to just be swimming around and, right. and that's a whole nother problem, which is usually a reverse T3 problem. So your thyroid is your master gland. It's really responsible also for all of the female and male sex hormones. So when thyroid's low, you know, that, other, that, that gets shut down and usually mm -hmm. symptoms manifest with females with gynecological issues. That's, you know, miscarriages, things like that. But what happens is is when you're in a state of stress and that's any stress okay mm -hmm. that could be over exercising doing i pretty much gave myself i'm pretty convinced i gave myself hypothyroidism because i followed that whole zone you know low fat but overtraining and yeah. you know eat every two three hours a day and you know i did achieve a level of fitness that was pretty outstanding mm -hmm. but i suffered because i was hungry all the time yeah. and and felt like i had to you know exercise willpower and not only that but my thyroid shut out. Now, sometimes like athletes get the same problem and it's sure. because the primal perspective of your body is, whoa, 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 this person's stressed or they're undernourished, so they're starving. And we're not gonna, we're gonna shut down Abel's testosterone, we're gonna mm -hmm. take it down because he can't afford to have a baby right now because he can't even eat himself, right? right. That This is what, you know, your body is thinking, so it'll shut it down. So the most opt, the way to optimize it is um, to have zero levels of stress. You know, you wanna always be sending the message to your brain and your thyroid that you're okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then what does that mean? Well when you have the blood glucose up and downs of either hypoglycemic worlds or these terrible diets that we now know are the wrong way to live that's a stress response you know cortisol will raise in in response to that and then your thyroid's going oh they're in a stressful state right. or if you're constantly inflamed i mean even something like uh overeating which i used to do you know mm -hmm. um and not even binging but i mean like not eat all day and then eat like mm -hmm. a crazy amount yeah that can be even seen. Your body's like, oh, well, we've got to deal with this inflammation. We've got to deal with the stress. So we're going to shut down mm -hmm. this incredible fat burning 
hormone that doesn't want to create more energy for you. So you've got to work with your thyroid and you've got to work with this primal perspective in order to achieve, you know, the optimal fat burning situation. And that's for everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's, mm -hmm. so that's one part of that was clear. Um, the signal that sent or not sent um, is something that, and we can get into blood tests later, but right away, I guess right off the bat, I'd like to just tell your listeners, because I, I hate it when I listen to these podcasts and the person doesn't even tell you like what blood to get tested. Yeah. So right away, I'll just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list off the things for cool. everybody. Uh, All TSH, you biohackers out there, pay attention. <laughs> that's right. TSH, free T3, free T4, mm -hmm. reverse T3, and then there's two Hashimoto's tests. Um, Hashimoto's is not a thyroid disorder, it's an autoimmune disorder that right. affects the thyroid, mm -hmm. sort of like autoimmune diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually is something that is triggered by grains and is if you catch it in time, you can kind of stay off of thyroid hormone replacement mm -hmm. kind of forever sometimes if you just follow the primal lifestyle. Yeah. You can catch it really quick. But the two Hashimoto's tests are TPO antibody, which is um, thyroid peroxidase antibody. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one called TGAB, which is thyro thyroid globulin. And you need to get both in order to assess what's what's the situation because some people with Hashimoto's can have one or not the other. So those are the tests. That's the main test. Anything else is kind of useless. Yeah. There's a lot of BS out there. There's T3 uptake or this, that, and the other. And if they test TSH without the ones that I just mentioned, mm -hmm. that's where we run into problems. So the reason I suffered so greatly is because, and I, and I had a PPO. I'm a college educated person. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've been taught to even challenge doctors, get second opinions. By my 15th opinion, and no doctor being able to help me and yeah. testing me incorrectly. I suffered for two years and literally six years of my life total were given to, and when I say suffered, I mean at home crying every day, miserable, bloated, fat, everything went wrong from yeah. hair falling out to gynecological issues and everything else. So when your thyroid's not working, it'll start to cause a host of other problems mm -hmm. that will create a disease of some kind that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten. Yeah. And so I was misdiagnosed at one point with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, mm -hmm. one might say, well, how did a doctor do that? And it's like, well, it might have looked on the ultrasound like that, but no one was asking the question, why is a 30-year-old with normal gynecological health mm -hmm. all of a sudden having a problem? So when we deal with prescriptionist doctors who are just there to slap a Band-Aid on the symptom, they're never getting to the results. And one of the biggest problems is that people with depression, mm -hmm. any kind of mental or brain issues, you can take as many antidepressants as you want, they'll work for about six months, and then they won't work anymore. Mm -hmm. So every psychologist, every psychiatrist who has anyone walk into their office with any kind of mental issues, including bipolar, because people with Hashimoto's go in and out of being hypo and hyper, yeah. and that can create erratic behavior. And sure. some parents might say, oh, my teenager's just acting up, they're nutso, and it's like, you know what, you gotta pay attention to this. Mm -hmm. um, so. If people just test it at the base root, I mean, everyone should get, you know, their thyroid tested. But if you have any brain depression issues or cholesterol issues, thyroid's the first thing to test. That might be causing the problem. So yeah. a lot of people remain sick for a very long time because no one's getting to the root. And considering that this is the master gland of the body, it should mm -hmm. be tested in every scenario of a disease potential. Yeah. Thyroid that makes sense. is huge. And I think a lot of people don't really talk about it or ignore it or see it as some other problem but you know you can see it in action when those bodybuilders abuse the hormones that are related to the thyroid because it's it's That's a right. really powerful effect so what are some of the things that you can do from a dietary perspective to make sure that your thyroid health is dialed in well for starters if for some reason you test positive for Hashimoto's you must stay away from everything containing gluten mm -hmm. and here's why um, and this is what a lot of doctors don't know. They don't realize that you can actually treat autoimmunity to some degree. You sure. know, we know that grains and sugar trigger autoimmune disorders. I mean, my coaching partner, Eli Rohde, who's been on the podcast, she'll have three fried olives and her arthritic, you know, symptoms come back immediately. Yeah. And that's just from grains. Same with Hashimoto's. So if you have Hashimoto's, that's something that for life you kind of have to get rid of and, and cheat very sparingly because Grains, even if you're, let's say you are on thyroid medication and you're feeling great and you have Hashimoto's. This is what doctors don't know. People with Hashimoto's have antibody levels that go up and down, but they are triggered by mostly grains and, and sugar and inflammation. So 
a lot of doctors just go, oh, this person has Hashimoto's, of course their antibodies are high. Right. You don't want your antibodies to be high because antibodies equal inflammation, right. equal more autoimmunity issues, mm -hmm. more problems. This is something that a lot of Hashimoto's patients out there right now who are well treated, doing well, not overweight, living a good life, still don't realize that there's underlying problems going on. Um, the paleo thyroid solution, one of my success stories is actually a friend of mine, was the last person I thought would go paleo, you yeah. know, never thought she'd give up her pasta. Right. When I gave her this information, her antibodies went from being up in like the 300s down to 70 within just a couple of months wow. of gluten free. Yeah. So that's, that's one thing you can do if you have Hashimoto's. The other thing is really getting on the paleo Leo Primal, you know, mm -hmm. program in terms of even lifestyle. It really is about slowing down. Um, you know, one of my fails was before I even knew all this stuff, I was under the impression like, oh, hot yoga five, six days a week. I'm, I'm going to sweat my ass off, my heart rate. <laughs> I've got to be burning the most fat at possible. <laughs> and I was getting fatter around the middle yeah. because of cortisol. Yeah. Right. So the thing is, is, um, you know, you've got to get all the components in. And what I've noticed with coaching people is they're missing one. Like they may have the diet down mm -hmm. and they may, you know, have even some low stress, but they're still overtraining. Yeah. You know, and so when you overtrain and you're in a, a chronic, you know, cardio or just chronic overtraining, your body sees that as a stress and says, I'm shutting down the T3, which is really the only important thyroid hormone that is in this whole mix. Mm -hmm. T4 is just a pro-hormone, okay? So a lot of times we have conversion problems in people. Um, the T4 will not convert into the powerful right. T3 because it senses you're under stress and it doesn't want to give you more energy because mm -hmm. it's dealing with a problem. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so um, the, the life, and so to reduce all levels of stress or what you're primal perspective might think would be adopting this program that not only manages blood glucose as you and I both know yeah. it, it, more so than anything but it really is about dialing it back on the exercise because mm -hmm. that can cause a problem um, and then of course diet I mean you know I wild diet I mean, we you know we all know the principles anyone can look that up but sure. you know that's yeah so what does your exercise look like now um, I do kind of everything actually. Mm -hmm. I, I swim several miles a week sometimes. I hike almost every day. But what I had to change was is I really had to wear a heart rate monitor when I learned this stuff because I was hauling ass up the mountain. Yeah. And, you know, I was tired and sore afterwards, surprised and hungry. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Now that we know, yeah. we know, right? Um, so, I mean, I exercise every day for at least an hour. Um, there are times when I do kind of a mega deal. I might do like a two hour hike and then go for a swim and lift some weights. I mean, it's rare that I punch it that hard. Yeah. Um, but I kind of do everything. It's just, I make sure that I'm doing it at the proper non glucose burning heart rate for the most part. I try to sprint, you know, every once in a while, which I think really, I mean, you, as you know, that that'll really just it take works. week. It works. Yeah, it and, works. and I hate running. I hate running. You know, uh -huh. I really do. But but it works. The sprinting's um, different though, isn't it? I mean, it's not like you're yeah. going out there for two hours and you're running and running and running. It's just like, bam, <laughs> you're being chased by it a tiger. Is. It's bam, just like the hell of the motivation of it where you're like, oh, I don't want to go. You know, I don't want to do it, but the payoff's so great it's and so it does good. take a minimal amount of time. So, so obviously I followed those principles, but really it was about chilling out on the exercise. I yeah. was just over exercising. And here's the thing, not because I had some hang up about it's because I just – I'm a high energy person. I love that stuff. And it's really hard, as I'm sure you know, and many listeners who've gone, you know, primal, it's hard to get rid of this social construction of go, 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 and that's how you lose weight. Right. You know? And um, it's really kind of freaky to chill out and realize then how much better you feel and how much easier it is to burn fat. And that yeah. really is all related to your thyroid. And it's related to the thyroid medication or hormones that I take as well. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be synthesized and go to the right places if I don't, you know, follow this underlying scenario. Yeah. And so that's for every that goes for everybody. Totally. Uh, so let's shift gears a little bit and talk about what's happened with the whole paleo thing in the past few years and even months. You know, like Los Angeles Lakers going paleo. You watch a holiday in commercial, they're talking about paleo breakfast <laughs> options. What in the world is going on? It's so great though. It's so great because I feel, well, I don't know about you, but I mean, I spent, I spent so many years, I've read every diet book you yeah. can imagine. And in fact, when I even started to work for Mark, I, I've told the story before where I, 
I skimmed his book. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause like, I was like, yeah, I've read them all, whatever. This guy wrote another book, the same thing, same thing. <laughs> and then I was doing the hot yoga and I was getting fatter and fatter. And I was trying to lose the, the, the fat that I had gained while the last bout of hypothyroidism. Yeah. And I'm looking at Mark and his wife and I'm like, you know, I think they know something I don't. I should probably go read this book again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I was like, oh my God, I'm doing it wrong. And, um, you know, here's the thing too. A lot of people with thyroid problems, um, whether you're on medication now and you're feeling great, they're, they're really the last lingering thing. And mm -hmm. it's predominantly a woman's disease. It's about eight out of 10 women. Mm -hmm. There's about 40 million Americans with it, 200 million worldwide. It's an epidemic. Yeah. Um, a lot of people can't lose that weight and it's because you become often insulin resistant mm -hmm. while in this state. Mm -hmm. And so then you can get back out and you can file and follow any diet you want, but then you're just on that hamster wheel, you know, that sugar burning hamster wheel of the zones and the South beaches or whatever we know these eat every two, three hours, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, the best thing about the primal paleo thing to me and a lot of the success stories we have is that it does kill food addictions. Yeah. It does really kill yeah. what's going on in here. And you think something's wrong with you. I was like, why do I have a problem? Mm -hmm. Why am I obsessed with food? Well, mm -hmm. I was a sugar burner until yeah. I really got fat adapted. I was like, oh my God, this is a freedom. I can't even believe I'm taking an eight hour flight. Then I got two hours to where I got to go and I'm fine. Yeah. And all I did was eat some fat and some protein at yeah. the beginning of that day. Um, the fact that I don't think about it all the time and I'm not constantly obsessed or trying to have to like hold myself back mm -hmm. is, is a freedom that comes with no other diet or eating strategy I've ever tried. Yeah. Um, it works and when it doesn't, there's an element that's missing. Either there's overtraining involved, mm -hmm. there's over protein consumption involved, right? Sure. That, that goes through gluconeogenesis. I've made every mistake there is with the primal, you know, I ate too much fatty, too much nuts. I, and then at one point I realized, I think even though we say it's primal blueprint, like 150 carbs you're under is, is a good base. Uh -huh. Well, for someone like me, who's five, two and a female who was insulin resistant, I can't do 150 carbs a day. Yeah. You know, you got to find your own threshold. So when people get frustrated and give up, it's because they're not tinkering enough and they're not looking at all these elements. And that's the you thing. Know? Yeah. Because you, you assume that you have it all figured out at some point. And as soon as you decide that, something changes. <laughs> you know, I don't know if it's karma or, or what, yes. but something happens yes. and whatever you're doing needs to be adjusted or else you're not going to have your health. You're not going to have your energy. Maybe you're going to get soft around the middle. Something is happening and you need to always pay attention. So let's, let's talk about some of the mistakes that you made while trying to do the right thing because I think that's especially interesting, right? So you mentioned eating too much fat, eating too many nuts. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Well, when I first started, you know, you know, it takes a good month, right? You know, a couple first couple of weeks can be really tough for people when you're coming off a sugar addiction and being a glucose sugar burner. Uh, uh, man, you know, I was like, what do I eat? What do I do? Yeah. My brain, I'm tired. I'm hungry. This is not right. It feels unhealthy, you know? Yeah. And then I, thank God I had Mark. I went to Mark. I'm like, what am I doing? He's like, well, what are you eating? And I'm like, I'm eating nuts. And, you know, you, you tend to sort of just, you still want to eat a lot when you're a sugar burner. So the yeah. first couple of weeks, I feel like you kind of might overeat. And that might be okay, but just as long as you're overeating, not carbs and you know protein mm -hmm. and fat so again for me i love meat i love protein i can go to town on it yeah. um but i really had to take a look when i wasn't achieving the results i wanted and i was like i was going way over 120 grams of protein a day that might be enough for a dude who's ripped yeah. and six feet but i'm five two right. um i also so then i had to adjust that down and increase the fat mm -hmm. then i realized okay m even though i'm eating healthy carbs it was too much for me. And even though I was following this under 150, I really need to be under like 70, 60 for me. Okay. I had insulin resistance, mm -hmm. still working on that. Mm -hmm. um, nuts are tough because you know what? A serving is really a shot glass. I don't know anyone who eats a shot glass of nuts. Man, I want to eat like a whole bag of pistachios. You know what I mean? Like, so oh. those can be a danger territory when you're trying to like get fat adapted and yeah. figure this out. And I think it takes a lot of tinkering. Mm -hmm. um, I also then really had to get the heart rate monitor out because okay. and do the calculations and figure out because I was just going too fast. Mm -hmm. I was just going too fast. And so therefore I was really, and you know, even uh, Brad Kearns talks about it with their latest book, Primal Endurance, which mm -hmm. is, you think what you did is slowing down and then you need to like take it even a step. And it feels like I'm not 
doing anything. Yeah. Like I'm not working out, mm -hmm. but it actually is the way to get the results. You are burning fat in that 55 to 75% of your max. You know, you go yeah. over that continually and lactic acid, you know, glucose, now you're gonna be left kind of on empty and have to replenish that. So these were things that I had to really, you know, I wanted to master it and, and I'm still, you know, I still tinker. You, I'm sure you do too, mm -hmm. you, you see what's right for you. Um, I recently took a food sensitivity test and I don't have many food allergies or sensitivities that I feel, mm -hmm. but um, it said I had a severe intolerance to cocoa. Well, been, because cocoa's primal, dark yeah. chocolate's primal, <laughs> I was eating some level of cocoa every day. It's well, lunch, you know, yeah. so these are all, right, these are all just like more, you know, genetic testing. There's testing and all sorts of stuff you can do, but at the most part, it's like, you know, I'm just constantly figuring out the more information you have, the, the, the healthier and better you can be. And since I spent so many years so sick mm -hmm. and miserable and just so bloated and fat, I, I, I'm, more, I'm into it, you know, mm -hmm. I'm into it. Yeah. So, so you, you mentioned nuts and they're such a tough one because it's like, it is a tough one. People, uh, man, they just jam through those things. And if they don't do it with, with nuts themselves, it'll be the nut butters or, uh, even worse or more invisible are the, the paleo primal, even wild treats, which are basically, you know, if you're using an almond flour or a nut flour and you're eating nuts and you're having nut butters, I mean, it, it's it's a recipe for disaster. It's something that oh, especially like the paleo granolas, right? Like because oh, it's sure. just like I mean, you know, there goes half a bag. And when you look at like the caloric density of these yeah. things, you know, so even though we don't talk about, even though we try to, I try to stay away from, and I think we all do, is like counting calories. Mm -hmm. There is still something to be said about when you start off, you got to really burn the fat that's on your body, mm -hmm. not what you're ingesting and you can get fat on a low carb diet sure. you can it's mm -hmm. happened to me so um but i think you know at first it's the the first couple of weeks can be a tough transition and so i think people and then once you kind of your appetite gets suppressed as yeah. i'm sure you know and yeah. and then you start to go all right and you eat less but you know that that first couple months can be can be tough and mm -hmm. and now it's not tough at all i mean it's really not and i you think know? you touched upon this before it's like when you're burning sugar or carbs primarily every meal you're kind of like leaning in and then leaning back a little bit because you're like I've got to eat this but I'm, but not too much and I want to make sure that I'm not eating too much and that I know for me when I was there I was just constantly being like I don't don't eat too much don't eat too much right but when you transition to burning fat it's like you eat when you're hungry and when you, yeah. you're not you just don't really eat or you don't eat that much and it's not this struggle with yourself no. right I love that. I mean, that is like, I wish I knew about this 15 years ago. Yeah. I felt like I had, I had a problem. Something was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And what I realized is like, oh my, a lot of people struggling with this on the inside. I mean, I almost went to an Overeaters Anonymous meeting at one point. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the hell? You know? Yeah. Um, and I was just following conventional wisdom. Um, the thing about the appetite suppression though, which can be a little bit tricky with thyroid is mm -hmm. some people, their appetite gets so suppressed and that's a great thing when you're trying to burn fat and in general, but sure. you do have to make sure you are getting enough nutrition yeah. because then thyroid problems can also settle in because mm -hmm. the body's, and here's, this gets into this whole thing in the community where people are like, low carb, low glucose, you need it for thyroid function, it's mm -hmm. causing thyroid problems. That, I, I'm not buying that. If our ancestors all were hypothyroid based on their 80 carb a day low or lower mm -hmm. intake, we wouldn't even be here. Yeah. <laughs> Procreation would have never happened. Right. Um, what I believe is the missing element here is, you know, either somebody's appetite is so suppressed that they're not eating enough, so then that can trigger your body to go, uh-oh, right. Abel may be starving, let's, right. let's shut down these <laughs> fat burning <there>. hormones. <laughs> right, yeah, and, and you know, there, there's that part of it. Um, and then also there's just like a, a stress factor. It could be overtraining or some other area that they're not mm -hmm. realizing is it, you know, and it, usually people are missing one element I found, you know, someone have everything right, but they're still running 40 miles a week. And it's like, right. well, that's cool. You're running 40 miles a week, but you might need to get that heart monitor out. Cause I guarantee you that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Like that's the thing that you have to, um, to deal with. But we have seen people even at Primal Blueprint who've, but we're all so excited. We're all active, and mm -hmm. then you have fun doing all these active things, and you don't even realize you're overtraining. Yeah. Until your adrenals kind of poop out, and then you are low energy, and that's all really related to thyroid too. Yeah, and that happens so often, right? You see, you see someone they're doing really great, and they're like doing all these races, or you see them on Facebook, and they're just like, yeah, all the time. Then all of a sudden, you don't see them for a while, and you realize they crashed out. So how? 
if you're about to crash out, if that's happening to you, what can you do to kind of like nip that in the bud? Um, I, I my go to is salt. I know this yeah. is because so here's the thing: oh, that the best things, one, honestly, yeah. to support the adrenals. So I've had adrenal fatigue before. I mean, we're talking. I, I so I mean disaster. Okay, mm-hmm. I mean I mean. I wish you could have seen me a few years ago. You guys would all just, well, there's some before pictures in the book. You'll, you'll see how bad it is. Yeah. We'll um, link to one block. But, right, but what I tell everyone, um, when you're starting to feel run down, stressed out, and you know it's kind of like overtraining, and maybe you kind of can't avoid it because of whatever you're doing in life, Celtic sea salt, Himalayan salt, Hawaiian salt, right mm-hmm. off the bat, half a teaspoon, right down the hatch every single morning. Okay, There's a whole book called Salt Your Way to Health. Yeah. I really healed my adrenals through an entire you know, canister of salt, salt, B complex and vitamin C. Those things are adrenal supporters. Mm -hmm. If you're under any kind of stress in life, it could just be work stress. These are the things to really pay attention to. And it works. Um, now there's a lot of adrenal formulas. Okay. That have herbals in them. And I am not anti them, but I will say this. I have had things like licorice or other things that are supposed to sort of manage cortisol and, you know, not too high, not too low that have jacked me up in a bad way. Either made me feel super drugged out, which Mm. is just like, or, or the opposite. So I'm more in line with vitamin B, salt, and, you know, C and uh, B complex, vitamin uh, uh, C and salt. Mm -hmm. And those three three things right there you can do every day and it's not going to harm you and it's just supporting your adrenals. I mean, there's other more severe protocols for people that like it's, it's rare, but people sometimes are at the end and they actually need to take hydrocortisone yeah. and then eventually wean themselves off of it. But that's very serious, long-term undiagnosed, you know, thyroid and adrenal sufferers that it's, it's rare that that happens. But I think in general, I think a lot of people have some sense of sort of adrenal, issues going on you know yeah. people are slumping out at three in the afternoon that shouldn't happen yeah it really shouldn't unless you got no lack of sleep you should have energy throughout the day if you don't that's a problem yeah. you got to look at that and, and, and if anyone i mean and i always challenge anyone they're like well you know i'm 40 i'm, I'm like uh-uh, don't even don't even <laughs> don't even go there you right. know i mean mark is 62 he's killing it you know and i mean i'm 42 <laughs> and i feel like i'm killing it yeah. but um you know that's another sign too. If you're having a slump in the afternoon and you're already paleo primal and you're fat adapted and you're doing the program, then you need to look into like adrenal supporters. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned carbs earlier, um, keeping them relatively low. Are you going for tubers? Is it just the fibrous varieties? Like what are you going after and how are you sourcing your carbs? Let's see, like one large baked potato, I believe, is about 63 grams of carbohydrates. So in a day of about 70 or 80, that's Mm going to be the one thing I would if I'm going to do that um, right now and this is only just because I really want to nip the insulin resistance and in, in the bud for good and really you know you have to kind of like be there for a long time right mm-hmm. before you can you know have these things so if I do a crazy over workout day I might have a loaded baked potato or something for the most part I, I try to stay away from fruit mm-hmm. uh, and not that fruit is bad but it's just it's a slippery slope for me because I'll eat like five packages of blueberries. Like I just love blueberries. Really? I love wow. this stuff. You know, I love it. And so portion control is tough with that, like it is mm-hmm. with nuts. You know, because mm-hmm. I just love it. I also don't want to give my brain the sugar, anything. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's important if you're if you're trying to do this for the first time and, and get fat adapted and spend a month like locking it in. I would say I say to everyone, try to stay away from fruit. You're training your brain mm-hmm. off of sugar. Train it away, you know, because yeah. those blueberries are going to be a pull there and, and you can overdo. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I do eat some fruit, but I mostly eat vegetables. I'm really low carb right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably below, you know, 60, 50 a day, which means you really have to increase the fat. I do really like um, Jimmy Moore's audiobook, Keto Clarity, if anyone's mm-hmm. considering ketosis. Or I think it's a really great um it's like a seven hour audio book. It's an amazing expose on the subject. And I, I suggest that if anyone knows they're insulin resistant um, or gets tested and, and has that confirmed, that that's a really great book to, to look at. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, the carbs are going to be lower than maybe most because of the insulin resistance that I had gotten. Uh, but, you know, I say for everybody, like under 150 to start, and then you have to find your own threshold yeah. with everything. I mean, I don't know how much, do you know how much protein you consume a day? Like, are, are you, do, do you have an idea? Generally speaking, you? and I, I'll cycle it, right? Sometimes I feel really good not really eating that much protein a day. Definitely, you know, 
some some days would be less than 50 some days more 100 sometimes it's you know pound per lean mass or whatever it really i what i find <laughs> is that the more I exercise and the more intense it is and mostly the most the more that I go for strength within those few days I just crave it and this happened to me this is actually the first time I broke being a vegetarian was because I went to the gym and I was strength training and I'd been vegetarian for a while and I was just like I couldn't get away from the thought of steak it was like my muscles my body my brain they were all screaming steak now red meat do it and I was just like all right I'm I'm going for it because like you want to listen to your body. You want to honor some of those cravings. Like if if you can tell that they're coming from the right place, like I knew that I had a deficiency right then. You know what I mean? Right. And, so and, I tried and, to and you weren't that. craving pretzels. Like you, you know what I mean? Right? You were, <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, here's the thing about that craving thing. You know, when I was seriously anemic, which is a classic among thyroid mm-hmm. hypothyroid patients are often low in vitamin D, B, uh, you know, they're anemic. And these all cause problems with even trying to get your thyroid optimized. But when I was right. severely anemic and didn't know it, I was craving chopped chicken liver from like Jewish jellies, like nonstop. Like Isn't I, that crazy? I mean, I, it's, it's so telling. It's so mm-hmm. telling. I was just craving meat all the time. At that point, though, when you get so low, no amount of food can do it. And at right. that point, you really do have to take iron supplementation. Um, I also, one of the things that I always fail at is I can't sort of shop for the week like a lot of people because mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm going to want. Yesterday, I had the fattest New York strip with butter, just like, oh, I just loved it. Right. And today, and I was like, I might want that again tomorrow. That was so good, you know? Yeah. And then I ate it again. Yeah. And then, you know, and then I might just be craving like raw fish tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. And so mm-hmm. I don't, I often will waste food if I try to, I go to the grocery store almost every day. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, because I just I just like go to eat what I crave. There's times when I just crave cucumbers. Yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna go with it. Right. I'm just gonna go with it. That that says something. I don't know what it is. I mean, there's <laughs> other times I crave random things too, other than meat, you know, or, yeah. or I'll crave fat. And um, one of the things I have noticed though is that if I do eat too much fat, it's kind of clear. I think you feel it. I'm sure you've had this experience. Mm-hmm. It's just it is a a gross, too fully like yeah. ugh, I eat too much fat. There's something yeah. a little nauseous about it. So you can you know your body will tell you. And then I also love the that documentary called The Perfect Human Diet. Mm-hmm. And in it they talked about how and I love this idea that you know when you you can overeat the protein as a slow release glucose sort of mechanism. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when yeah. you think about like our primal ancestors where there might not have been any carbs, that is a built-in immediate awesome thing you know they can overeat the protein and then that's going to like kind of be like a slow release glucose so sometimes i think of that like if i totally go to town on protein and i go all right i can't i can't calculate what part of this is going to turn into glucose but Mm -hmm. as a result of me overeating protein today i'm really going to keep the carbs low yeah do you know what i mean you just kind of like tinker around yeah yeah and that's that's the fun of it when you're tinkering when you're experiencing you know there's something to be said for admitting to yourself that you did eat too much fat or you did overeat protein and you know what it feels like you honor that and uh and then hopefully you'd be craving something else the next day you know sometimes i'm surprised by how little i really want you know it'll just be fresh leafy greens and salmon something really light you know no added fat or whatever sometimes it'll be like that and and being able to get in touch with that i think is something that i'm sure our ancestors were deeply in touch with um, but a lot of us have really lost sight of that today. So what what are some things that people can do to kind of bump up or boost their body sensing abilities? Hmm. Well, I mean, I really think you touched on it earlier, which is a tenet that I think we all kind of preach, which is only eat when you're hungry. Mm-hmm. It is such a socially constructed pressure to feel like there's meal times. I really am not hungry most of the day until one, two, maybe even I eat dinner, my dinner at like 3.34. And I know that doesn't work with people with families, you have to cook for everyone, but you gotta do what you gotta do to get to where you need to go. Mm -hmm. So um, I I feel like that's an important one, like eating when you're hungry. There's so many people that are like, so what do I eat for breakfast? What do I, and I go, no, no, nothing. If you don't want to, nothing. Mm -hmm. That's a concept people just can't get that you really need to get. So I think that's part of it too. Don't eat because there's a meal time or you feel you should. Mm -hmm. And also the other thing too, I think that's important is after exercise or, um, I feel like it's important to just eat fat. 
sometimes. Yeah. Just right, just straight up fat. Like I'll, I'll go hiking and I'll just take a spoonful of coconut oil because yeah. it's it's like a trainer. I'm not even hungry, but right. I also know I may not be eating for hours. And I'm like, okay, well, I want to keep my brain going because I know I might not have access. We all have access to a grocery store and food sure. 24/7. Pretty much, no one's living in you know the Sea of Coast, Russia. <laughs> you know, what I mean, like we're not. You know, but but at the end of the day, sometimes there are things like like the flight. Like when I took a flight to Hawaii and I knew the whole ordeal by the time I got to where I was going to be was 10 hours. I was not hungry in the morning at all at the airport. I was yeah. not hungry at all. I was yeah. grossed out by food. But it was Especially a strategic. Food. Totally. But it was a strategic move. Yeah. I was like, they, they had grass fed burgers actually at the LAX airport, which is hilarious. What? <laughs> and they had like an, yeah, they had like an egg on top of it. And I literally what? ate like a, a beef patty with yeah. a thing with a, with an egg. I was done until late that night in yeah. Hawaii. And I did that as a strategy move. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so there are times when I think, you know, if you know enough and you know where you're going to be or what your day's like, you don't want to get into a situation where you're like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm starving. I haven't mm -hmm. eaten. You know what I mean? And, and that usually doesn't happen when you're fat adapted, as you know. But yeah. those are some kind of tricks, too, like just eating a little bit of fat or making that strategic move for a day ahead of time. And it yeah. always works. And uh, my brain is on fire the right. entire time. I mean, when I eat fat, straight up fat, even just a couple spoonfuls of coconut oil, I'm on fire. Yeah. You know? It's it's a fundamentally different feeling that I was very happy to experience for the first time ever many years ago. But let's talk about what's happening recently with, with some of the research is catching up with the fact that fat, cholesterol, it's not quite as simple as, as we once thought it was. Where basically, don't eat cholesterol, it's bad for you, it's going to clog up your arteries and so saturated fat. Can you comment a little bit about how that's ridiculous now? Well, I mean... A good one is is breast milk is 50% saturated fat. So is it really wrong? Is right. it really wrong? You know, um, <laughs> I also just got my lipid panel done, uh, outstanding, and yeah. I was actually a little worried because I went to town on like saturated fat this year. Like I ate more meat and the fat off of animals, and some not gr you know not grass fed. You know, yeah. I mean just, it, and I was like, oof, I think I might have overdone it. And mm -hmm. my lipid panel was amazing. Cool. Um, and I think that that's just, that goes to show you when you have the other elements involved and your body can handle that. Right. Um, I get into these conversations all the time. I'll be at uh, like the Whole Foods meat department and someone will see me order like, these ribs and they'll go, oh, are those less fatty than the other ones? Or someone will say, can I cut the fat off of that? I'm like, no, leave it on. We need fat. Fat's great. And <laughs> I try to, you know, preach it wherever I go. And I mentioned the Time Magazine cover, Eat Butter. Everything yeah. we knew about fat was wrong. Um, so... It, but here's the thing. It's a hard thing to get over initially. I feel like I had to pound it into my head, eat fat, because when you first go primal, or at least for me, I, and, and this is everyone's misconception, it's high protein. Yeah. Eat, when in doubt, eat meat. So I was doing that. Well, do you know what I mean? So I had to kind of like calculate it. Like, okay, I'm going to get coconut oil and I'm going to, do, you know, and now it's natural. Now I just, I go by what I feel. I know if I need more fat, I know, you know, now it's intuitive. But I think for the start, it's kind of forcing yourself to eat fat, yeah. which is tough for people, but it yeah. works, you know? And it's hard for people, like you said, to get over that because at first it just, there's so much conditioning there that you can like feel your arm resisting you as you're spooning coconut oil into your mouth. You're just like, I feel so guilty and strange yeah. right now. Well, but and low carb, low fat is the way to give yourself hypothyroidism. I mean, that it's right. the way to give yourself almost every single yeah. problem. Um, it's going to jack up your adrenals and then lead to other, a host of other issues. Um, so, you know, if fat's really important, um, the biggest thing was getting over the carb and the grains, you know, the grains mm -hmm. is a tough one for people. And, um, but you know, once you get over it, you just look at that stuff and you're like, nah, I mean, look, that, that's not to say that on Thanksgiving, I'm not going to have stuffing and go for it. Of yeah, course. And sure. I might pay for it a little bit, like whatever. Yeah. I'm a human being. And, Worth it. and I think one of the things we've talked with, yeah. And I think one of, one of the things we've talked about before on like our podcast is, you know, quitting this stuff is not a life sentence to never have it again, okay? Right. So the cop-outs, like, oh, well, I love my lasagna I make once a year. Okay, you're eating it how many times a year? One, four times a year? Yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah. That's not a cop-out, that's such a cop-out excuse to not take the, the extra step. So right. I think it's frightening for people to go, well, I don't ever wanna not have a bagel. First of all, you're not gonna want that bagel, as you and I know, you're not gonna really yeah. want it by the time you get fat adapted, but at, at the end of the day, this is not a life sentence, but mm -hmm. let's get fat adapted first, achieve your results, and then let's see if you even want the bagel, Yeah. you know? Um, 
I found that I don't want that stuff anymore. And I thought yeah. I could never give up brown rice and rice and eating sushi for the first time without rice was like, what? This is wrong. But now <laughs> it's like, I can't eat it with the rice. I would never eat it with the rice. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so interesting how tastes change. I remember loving fruit juice and the, just the, oh, the sound of yeah. that now is gnarly. I, I, I have it's somehow just like linked that to how to I feel. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I just look at juice and I'm like, that's just, you know, and I remember my father one point saying, what do you mean orange juice is bad for you? And I was like, oh, yeah. God. And um, there's a lot of juice places in, you know, I live in Malibu or, we're, mm-hmm. we're, you know, in Southern California, a lot of juicing going on. Um, if we look at Steve Jobs' life of constant juice intake and look what happened to his pancreas. Um, and then I read an article where Ashton Kutcher tried to mimic his diet for a few weeks when he was doing that movie where he starred right. as him and his pan- he got pancreatitis. Really? Uh, because he just, yes, he did. And that was only like six weeks after following what Steve Jobs lived a lifetime of. Right. Um, they also claim, and again, I'm you know, making large claims here, but you know, they talk about like Steve Jobs being moody and stuff. I'm like, well, listen, if you're drinking Odwalla juices all day long, man, I mean, <laughs> no wonder you're like, I'd sure. be like a nightmare, you know? So we can see, and then again, there might've been other things going on, but that's just a this sort of like one example of someone who literally just was a super juice drinking fruitarian, mm-hmm. you know, all carbs, all sugar. Um, I think the evidence, like that just the ancestral evidence is too compelling. The science is there. Mm-hmm. It's just there. And um, it's undeniable in terms of my experience and your experience and everyone who moves over to this. Yeah. Um, I had one, uh, you know, a lot of naysayers, like someone said to a friend of mine this Christmas, like, oh, that's so sad. You can't try the brownies. I'm so glad I don't have a problem with flour. And you're like, <laughs> no, you do. You do. <laughs> you do. You just don't know it. You know? Um, <laughs> and so, so you know, right <laughs> yeah, I can do it. Um, but that, that was a funny response. I had someone who said to me, they go, oh, wow, you're really religious about this stuff, aren't you? And I'm like, it's not religious. My friend's not lying that their back pain went away when they stopped grains for six weeks, unless yeah. you really think they're lying. I mean, um, I think people uh, notice a lot of changes when it comes to inflammation in the body, especially yeah. people with arthritic issues. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing where people are like, oh my God, not only did I lose weight, but holy shit, my shoulder problem went away right. and it'd been nagging me for six months. I thought I was gonna have to see you know, a doctor and, and you're like, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's my my favorite part about all of this. People will switch and they'll come because they want to lose weight or whatever. And they're just like, all of a sudden, everything that was bad got better. This is amazing. (laughs) And then they're going around being religious, religious about it, spreading the word. Totally. And I I mean, that's how people are on board, you know, sort of like accidentally get on board, which is which is really great. Yeah. so uh, luckily now, I mean, there's there's paleo primal docs. The doctor on my book, who we didn't write the book together, but I have a quarter of my book dedicated to a Q and A with him. Mm-hmm. He's um, you can find him on like the primal docs website. You know, there are doctors out there that know this stuff, and those yeah. are the doctors you should be talking to. Yeah. Um, and anyone with a thyroid issue should really be warned against seeing endocrinologist. Even though people think that's the first order of business when it comes to metabolic issues. Mm-hmm severely wrong. They have the highest egos. They are trapped in 1973, you know, treatment protocols. You really need to see, search out like an, an integrative physician who, you know, has experience with functional medicine and they may cost a little bit more or whatever, but those are the people that are really are up on the latest stuff when it comes to this. And I mean, of course you can read my book and, yeah. um, I did it myself. I didn't actually, um, I dosed myself twice in 10 years, um, with both thyroid problems because do- no doctors would help me. Mm-hmm. And, um, this is a kind of a classic story. I'm not the only one that this has happened to. Right. Um, it is possible to do it yourself. I think the big message too in all of this, doctors, no doctors, health is um, don't ever go just get blood results and let your doctor go, everything looks great. Look through them. Mm -hmm. Just because something's in range does not mean it's optimal, okay? Mm -hmm. And I've had so many doctors over the years, I mean, part of the title of my book is, you know, stop feeling fat, foggy, and fatigued at the hands of uninformed doctors. Yeah. And it's because, you know, I just listened to them at first. I was like, they must know what they're doing. They went to Harvard. No, right. they don't. You're the, you're, the, you're the best advocate for your help. You have to get on board. You have to start understanding what these blood tests mean. You have to be involved or you're going to get screwed like I was in every way, no matter what your problem is. Mm-hmm. So I think we just put too much faith in doctors and we don't realize that even though they're good people, they are coming from a 
very outdated conventional approach mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes. And until you seek out the people that are still interested and excited about medicine, which yeah. are usually the integrative docs, mm -hmm. um, you're just going to get a prescription and be sent out the door and um, laughed at if you say, should I quit grants? Yeah. The system you know? can be helpful, certainly not perfect right now, but the fact is if you want to take your health into your own hands, know that you can do that and that you must do that if you want to succeed, especially for a lifetime because things will always be going wrong. If you know how to if you put in the work, just a little bit of work to understand what your your blood numbers should be, what they look like right now. If you if you learn how to read those metrics, it's going to be pretty much the best investment you could ever make in your own health. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's um there and there are great doctors out there. Um, I love Western medicine. It comes in handy. I recently, for the first time in like 15 years, I I got sick. I got laryngitis. I couldn't yeah. talk for 12 days. This has never happened to me. Yeah. It was the weirdest thing in the world. I couldn't swallow well, so I actually went to urgent care and mm -hmm. I got a you know injection in my butt, steroid shot, and on that note. I had, for the first time ever, insomnia all that night. Wow. When we talk about adrenals, cortisone shot. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Um, and so, you know, that was like a, oh, yeah, I just totally dragged my adrenals. I, but I had to do it. It was just mm -hmm. one of those things where I was like, I'm willing to face whatever consequences come from this cortisone <laughs> shot because right now I can't swallow. So Western medicine can be great, and I'm not anti-Western medicine. I obviously yeah. – I even take a, a thyroid hormone that sure. is manufactured in a lab and whatever. Um so I'm not poo-pooing it, but at the end of the day, it's really like I can't even tell you how many people are on thyroid medication and they have zero yeah. clue as to how the thyroid even works. Right. They have no idea what it, the hormone that they're taking, no idea. Yeah. So it's like if you're on thyroid medication, even if you're feeling great or not, you need to start learning about what you have going on because you can even optimize it further. There are a lot of people who are on thyroid hormones, and this is a big problem, where they're like, well, I still don't feel great, da 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 but my doc keeps checking my thyroid and says it's it's fine. Yeah. That's classic. That's a classic thing. Like your thyroid's fine. It's not, you must have, it must be something in your brain. You must be crazy. Work out more and eat less. Yeah. Um, well, no. You know, that's not the case. They're either on the wrong level of hormones, the wrong combination of hormones, or there's some underlying problem like low iron or adrenal issues that are affecting that thyroid hormone not working, whether it's your own or whether it's something you're taking. Yeah. So um, those are a couple of nuances there too. That might be off tangent, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We are just about out of time, but before we go, would you mind telling folks where they can find you and also a bit more about your book because I think a lot of people should just go straight there if they think they're having their own thyroid issues. Right. Well, it's called The Paleo Thyroid Solution. It's on Amazon for pre-order right now. Um, basically, I, I deta I, I've read every thyroid book on the planet and they don't give you enough information. Mm -hmm. um, I tell not only the readers what exactly I did when I had to do it myself. And I'm not encouraging it, but I also want to share with everyone because you might be able to work with your doctor and go, this could be this could be an option. Um, I detail dosing. I detail how to even tell if you have a thyroid problem. I give blood test examples. I go into a very rare discussion on reverse T3, which is an ever-growing problem, um, which is inability to convert T4 to T3. Um, it's it's a huge problem and it's getting worse and I had it too. So I I think I'm the only the second author really uh, in the world who's really gone into depth on that. I'm also the second author in the world who's on T3 only, which is very rare and um, kind of controversial to some degree among the medical community. So I talk a lot about that. So I'm sort of an anomaly and I've been through also every thyroid issue. I've been hyper, I've been hypo. Mm -hmm. I've also had a reverse T3 problem. I've had everything but Hashimoto. So I've really been able to see what works and what doesn't. And because I dosed myself and took my own blood work, you know, I, I, I naturally became an expert. But if you don't believe me, the quarter of the book is devoted to a QA and a with Dr. Gary Forsman, who is a paleo doc and gets thyroid health. And we go through everything from why are doctors so egotistical to what should I do if I, you know, so we, we touch on every, every aspect of it. It's, I also have a lot of before and after pictures in there. There's a lot of people that write thyroid books mm -hmm. and they talk about how to lose weight, but they never actually tell you how to do it. They just give you like a sample of all the diets. Like, well, there's South Beach, there's this, there's that. Right. And it's like, no, man, I mean, I'm, I'm fat. I want to, 
I feel good now, but I can't lose this damn fat that I gained while I was hypothyroid. Like, right. now what do I do? Yeah. And now that we've talked earlier, it's insulin resistance or it's something more. So I go into detail about, you know, a paleo primal chapter and also before and after pictures of mm -hmm. myself and also a couple of other success stories of people who are thin, trim, looking good. You know, I think when you're going through this stuff and you look out there, you, you want a role model to be like, well, like there's a woman who's written several thyroid books and she's very overweight. Mm -hmm. That's not encouraging. Yeah. And I'm not knocking that woman, but it's like, it's, you want to cry because you already just gained 50 pounds and mm -hmm. you're, you're a bloated mess. And then you start to feel better, but you can't lose this weight. And am I really going to listen to you? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, um, and I'm not trying to be on the cover of shape magazine and I don't, consider myself a model but you know i wanted to put photos in there that were yeah. like all right hey she did it yeah. she did it you know so that's what you're going to see and it's just it's extremely detailed unlike a lot of other thyroid books and i've read them all so awesome well very inspiring yeah. if you want to know anything more about the thyroid please check out Elle's book Elle, thank you so much for coming on thank you so much for having me we're such a huge fan of yours at primal blueprint so thank you Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Fat Burning Man. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, the podcast app, or wherever else you might be listening to or watching this show. Got a second? Please leave me a quick review on iTunes. I always love hearing from you, and if you think someone else might like and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or with a family member. You can get in touch with me on Twitter at FatBurnMan and Facebook by typing in Abel James or FatBurningMan. Drop me a line anytime. Did you know that I've recorded over 150 episodes of Fat Burning Man, winning four awards in independent media and hitting number one in more than eight countries? And here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode for free. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com I'll give you a second to type it in fatburningman.com and you'll get all the show notes and video and audio versions for all the past episodes of Fat Burning Man better yet enter your best email at fatburningman.com sign up for my newsletter and I'll even send you a quick start guide to start burning fat right now and a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free fat burning download straight to your inbox and make sure that you never miss a show again. This is Abel James signing off. Thanks so much for listening and have a great week. Three forty-eight, three forty-two, three forty-five. They never really improve, even though they're out there training hard and doing the work. Well, I'm saying, look, if you, if you, if this is your pursuit, you ought to be getting better every single marathon you race mm -hmm. until you're forty.